Hey, what's up everyone? This is Greg. Welcome back to our Intermediate Core Data video tutorial series. In this video, we'll look at fetched result controllers, which make it easy to manage your fetch requests and predicates to link core data with a table view. Here's what the app will look like by the end of this video and challenge. You'll have the device list powered by a fetched result controller, complete with table view sections. NS fetched result controller, as the name suggests, is a controller class that manages the results fetched from a core data fetch request. It holds a reference to a fetch request and the managed object context, and then can provide the results in a way friendly to the table view delegate and data source protocols. Instead of having a fetch request and then executing it, then storing the results somewhere to refer to later and so on, a fetch result controller handles the details for you in one single object. When you instantiate the fetched results controller, you pass in a fetch request, a managed object context, an optional key path to divide up the results by section, and an optional key to use when caching the data. Once you have the object set up, you need to perform the fetch just as you would need to execute your fetch request if you were dealing with the fetch request manually. There are two additional bits of configuration you can set up, caching and the fetched result controller delegate. If you provide a string as the cache name, the fetch result controller will cache the results. This cache will even survive across app relaunches. And that means if you have many records among many sections, then caching will help speed up the data access. If you set a delegate object, then the fetch result controller will listen for changes to the objects in the set of results. That means if you're looking at the table view, and the data display changes because of a background save or something like that, the fetch results controller will notice the change and then it'll inform the delegate with a callback that something has happened. Then you can update the table view with the new information. Here we are in the devices table view controller. This is the table view that's gonna display the list of devices to the user. This is the very first tab in the app. Let's go ahead and start our refactor. I'm actually gonna remove this array of devices because we're not going to need it anymore. And let's replace that with our fetched results controller property. I've made that an implicitly unwrapped optional because we're going to initialize that down here in view did load. Let's go ahead and add that code. Remember, you need to pass a fetch request to the fetch results controller. So that's what I'm doing here first. We want a fetch request to retrieve the list of devices. And then we want to sort by the device type and then by name. If I just scroll down to the reload data method here, you'll see that we already have something similar. Remember, we're manually doing the fetch request and calling it. But here, up in view to load, we're setting up the similar kind of a thing but we're going to pass that into a fetch results controller. And let's add that now. Here we're initializing our fetch results controller. The fetch request is the one we just created up here. And then we pass in our managed object context from the core data stack. And then the section name and the cache name, we're just going to leave as nil. We won't use those for now. That's it for the initialization. Let's have a quick look at the reload data and see what's going on there. Remember, we have two cases here. One is if there's a selected person. This is an optional. And if this is set, then that means we've come from the person tab. So if you're looking at the list of people and you select a person, then this same table view controller is used to show just that person's devices. So we need one case to handle that. I'm just going to delete this code. And then the else case here is the standard case with the first tab, where we're just showing the list of all devices. And again, I'm going to remove this code. And this do catch will still be useful, so let me just keep it. And here we go. Our method is a shell of what it used to be, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and start filling it in. We'll start with the selected person case. This one is easy. If we have a selected person, then we just set the fetch results controllers fetch requests predicate to this new predicate, and we're just going to look for the owner is equal to the currently selected person. Again, that's in the easy case. 
And then let's look at the else case. This one is just as easy. Remember that the reload data takes this predicate parameter. So when you refresh the data, you need to pass in a predicate here. And so all we need to do is pass that predicate onto the fetch results controller's fetch request. So we set that here, and that's all we need to do. For the do catch block, remember when you execute a fetch request, you need to wrap it in do catch because it's possible that it can throw an error. And similarly, when you perform the fetch on the fetch results controller, you also need to wrap it. So I've already got the do catch set up. Let's go ahead and perform the fetch. And that's it. We'll perform the fetch and then we reload the table view. And that is it for the fetch results controller getting the data. Now there are a couple of places left in the view controller that we need to fix up. Let's just see where the errors are remaining. Number of sections in table view, we're still just gonna have one section. I'll leave that as one. Number of rows in section, right now we're still accessing that old devices array that we don't have anymore. Let's go ahead and refactor this to get the number of rows. The fetch results controller has this property sections. It's an optional and it's an array one for each section. So I'm gonna do a little optional chaining, make sure that this property is there. We're gonna index into it by section, that's again passed in as a parameter. And then we're gonna grab the number of objects property on it. And if something goes wrong in the optional chaining, something isn't quite right and there's a nil in there somewhere, then we're just gonna use nil coalescing and use zero as a good default to return here. There's the number of rows. Let's look now at self table view, cell for row at index path. And again, before we set up the cell with the device details, we are getting the device from that devices array that doesn't exist anymore. Getting the data from the fetch results controller is also super easy. You don't have to worry about sections or rows or any of that stuff. If you have multiple sections, then you'd have to index into it like a multi-dimensional array. You don't have to do any of that stuff. It has a very handy object at index path method. You just pass in the index path and you're done. It'll return an NS managed object, object back to you. But since we know these are devices, I'm just gonna force cast it to a device. And that's all we need here. Got one more thing to fix up way at the bottom for the segue. If we're showing the list of all devices and you tap on a device, then it will push onto the navigation stack the device detail screen to show the details of the device. And this is the prepare for segue where we're passing that along. And again, we're accessing that devices array that doesn't exist anymore. Let's go ahead and change the code there. And similar to table view self row at index path, we're just gonna call object at index path, give the selected index path, that's the one that's currently selected on the table view. And again, we can just cast it as a device. And that's it for the table view controller. We should have it all set to use the fetch results controller. Let's build and run and have a look. All right, here's our app. It still looks good. It's still running and starting up. We've got our list of devices. The segue is working. I can go ahead and segue to the details. And if I look at the list of people and select somebody, then their device still shows up here as usual. That's it for this video tutorial. And as always, we like to leave you with a challenge. Now that you have the fetch results controller set up, you'll take one more step and see how easy it is to have it split up the data by section and then configure the table view to display those sections. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.